This is part two of the video. The Bishop of London was a member of the great senatorial family and closely followed the Roman events. So it is unlikely that he could be wrong in a matter of their kind. On the other hand, we cannot give the light to the historian because written and archaeological evidence confirmed the majority of the Roman senators were at that time patrons of the soil Invictus, Mithras, the invisible son, Mithras. And therefore, to con common opinion, definitely pagans. What nobody seems to understand, however, is that the two conditions of the affiliate of Mithras and of Christians were all but compatible. There is no lack of historical evidence proving it. The most significant of ma most many possible examples is ex Emperor Constantine the Great. He was an affiliate of Saul Invictus Mithras, and he never disowned it. Now, even when he openly embraced Christianity and declared himself to be God's servant and a sort of universal bishop, his biographer Eusebius hails him as the wit as the new Moses, but Constantine was baptized only on his deathbed, and he never stopped minting coins with Mithraic symbols on one side and Christian symbols on the other. He even erected in Constantinople a co colossal statue of him wrapped in Mithraic symbols. As for the Roman senders, several contemporary sources, starting from St. Jerome, affirmed that most of the, their wives and daughters were Christian. An extended example of St. Ambrose, himself a pagan, and the son of the Mithraic pagan, the perfect of Gaul Ambrose, and to, according to historians, although there is no doubt that his family was Christian and lived in a profoundly Christian environment. Indeed, from his childhood, Ambrose loved to play the part of a bishop, and in the year 353, in St. Peter's, his sister Marcelina, still a young girl, received the veil of consecrated virgins from Pope Liberius. In person. Finally, however, he remained a pagan until he was designated Bishop of Milan. He was a, a actual baptized, actually he was baptized in 15 days before being consecrated as Bishop. The fact is that in this period, Christian destined for a public career were baptized only at the point of death, or else when for another reason one reason or another, they decided to embrace the Esilectic career. E C C L E C S I S T I C career. This was normal practice. The Senator Nectarius, who was designated Bishop of Antioch by Council of Constantinople in 381, was forced to postpone the consecration ceremony because first he had to engage will arrange his baptism. After the abolition of paganism, all Roman senators became Christian overnight. Starting from that Symmachus, who went down in history for his stern defense of pagan traditions in front of Emperor Valent Valentinian. A few years later, in fact, Emperor Theodosius, the most fanatic persecutor or heretic and pagans, Appointing him as a council, the highest position in Roman bureaucracy. How is it possible that one might ask that people could follow two religions at one time? Well, at the same time. So now, let's get back to the Pope. The chief of popes, well, the chief of fathers is a pope who always lived in Rome and was called the Pater Patrum or the Pater Petrus. The members below the degree of the Pater called one another brother. And social distinctions 
were forgotten in Mithraic unity. Hence, St. Peter has always deemed as the first pope, without caveat per tradition, but historical facts indicate otherwise. The overriding problem is that the term pope, in the context it is used now, well, is used, only became exclusive prerogative of the Bishop of Rome in late 4th century during the reign of Sirius. Yes. December 384 to November 399. Remember who's the first pope? According to the article of Flavio Barbiero, Sirius, first pope in Christian history. But the pope in Mithraic history was during that time, all the time Mithraism, Mithraism, Mithraism. But Sirius's time, first Christian pope. But the question that comes into conflict, the Catholics like to say Peter is the first pope, but Peter could never have been the first pope. Why? Because he was during the time of Jesus. Prior to that, the Greek papas or the Latin papa was commonly used in their original sense to refer to any priest or prelate in much the same way that today's Catholic priests are called father. It is the retroactive application of this title to those prior to Sirius, in particular the first nine listed as popes that caused issues. The term pope or an office comparable to that of a pope are not mentioned in the Bible. That is why I intend to cringe when I see statements that claim that Peter became pope around 30 AD. Per most accounts, Christ was still alive in 30 AD. I really cannot conceive that there was a Pope while Christ was still on earth. But Peter, he was not a Pope. He was not a Pope. Say John Paul II or Benedict XBI, I'll say John Paul II. Whether one likes it or not, the office that is now deemed to be that of a pope is irrevocably tied to that of Bishop of Rome. The pope is the Bishop of Rome and the Bishop of Rome is the pope. Period. That for the historical record is the basis of what is the papacy. St. Peter again per tradition and devotion is credited as being the first Bishop of Rome. Even if he was in Rome, and that is a huge if, I do not believe that he would consider himself to be a bishop of Rome or even Antioch. Rome did not have a bishop per till C140. In other words, it was not a manic a pascopy, as pascopacy, during the days. Instead, the Church of Rome was run by a collegiate group of Bristers. That is beyond doubt or debate. The eight so-called popes that followed St. Peter, who is not a pope, were without questions. Because you know why? Those who were claimed to be pope did not have any singular authority. So the position of pope was not there at that time too. So nine popes from Pope Peter all the way to eight popes after that were not popes. Because they did not have any singular authority. Pius the first appears to have been the first cleric to have been the singular head of Church of Rome. The nearest to being a bona fide bishop of Rome, so if anything, it is Pius the first who should be called the Pope. But the term Pope was used in the application that is used today, referred to Syriuscus. That's the time when the first time the word Pope was used in that term. To refer, refer to a person of singular authority. It was first used for Syriuscus, even though it was supposed to be Pope Pius the first, but it was Syriuscus the first. And, I, and the reason why they have a Christian Pope now, after so many years of Mithraism Pope, Mithraite Pope, was because they rooted out paganism. And no, the word. Pope comes from the Latin word Papa, which means Father. He is also the head of the Vatican, the tiny sovereign city-state within Rome, 
proper acronym of the word Petra Petrum or Fadis Fadi. And if you check Suryas's, he put in in Marseille from Mithraism to Christianity. He's the one who took objects from Mithraism and put into Christianity. And so what? That's proof that Christianity was copied from Mithraism. Because true Paul, true Constantine, who was a father of Mithras in the past and so-called converted to Christianity, even though he was writing symbols of Mithraism, were all followers of Mithras. Can't you see? It's just that they change the names. Those statues that they have, they change the name from the Mithraic statues to a different one, to a Christian one. Objects to a Christian one. Every single thing that you see was Christian that they changed it to. But in fact, it was really Mithraism. So, the source I would like to show you is article Flavio Barbiero Mithras and Jesus two sides of the same coin you can check that out that's one source for that piece of information so since historically we can see a concurrence we can see that Mithraism is really Christianity is really a copy of Mithraism now let me show you that Jesus himself never preached the word that these Christians today are following. Because these Christians today are followers of Mithras, not Jesus. We Muslims are the real follower of Jesus because we believe in the real word of him. We believe that he's the Messiah, Christ. We believe that he's not God, but he's the prophet of Allah, the messenger of Allah. As the Bible says. So let's start. Point number one, doctrine. Trinity. Where did they get the Trinity from? Constantine implemented it from Mithraism to Christianity, right? Simple. Through the epistle of Paul, Paul, after 354 years, Constantine used that epistle of former Trinity. Atonement, resurrection, different things. But the thing is, this Trinity is not found in this Bible. Why? Because if you go, to the King James Version. First Epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, which seems to be the most relevant verse for the Trinity, has been thrown out as a fabrication. Can you believe it? Turn to Christian scholars of highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denomination, say that this is a fabrication. As a fabrication, they threw it out. Can't you see it? RSV took it out from the Bible. But what did Jesus say? He says in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 18, Why doest thou call me good? There's no one good except one. That's God Almighty. Jesus is trying to say, even though he's good, I'm not good as God. That's what Jesus is trying to say. No one can be good as God, because God is good. So why are you calling me good? Because I can never, I can never be good as God. God is good. Does that sound to you that Jesus is God? In the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God from amongst you by wonders, miracles, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also would know. So what, what the Christian like to say? Jesus is God because of what? Because of the miracles, wonders, and signs that he did. What did Peter write? He said, Jesus is a man of proof of God from amongst you by wonders, miracles, and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourself also know. So does that mean Jesus is God? Through wonders, miracles, and signs? I mean, you tell me that Jesus raised the dead. I'm telling you that's through God's permission, Allah's permission. Because Jesus, before he was, at, was raising the dead, he asked, God for help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. He was crying actually. And the people tell he was moaning to God Almighty. Actually he was praying. For Lazarus. If you check in the scripture. That's another subject I'll deal with. But you raised him from the dead, right? But Prophet Musa was given a greater miracle. 
He took his staff 